Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending my lecture, Down the Rabbit Hole, A Journey Towards a Weakness in Chrome and a New Hacking Technique. Let me be more exact. This is actually two vulnerabilities that I'm going to talk about. A few words about myself. I work at SAI, or SISEC, which is an Israeli cybersecurity company. I'm the head of application security and security development lifecycle um, team. I have my own team. I'm a cybersecurity expert for uh, roughly 17 years. Uh, I hacked into almost anything that you can think of, uh, applications, boxes, networks. My specialty and my passion is application security. And I also practice secure development processes, SDLC, and assessments and trainings. So I do a lot of trainings overseas. Since COVID, I do it with uh, Zoom uh, remotely. And I'm part of the services department at SAI that performs other stuff as well. Red teaming, forensics, architecture, uh, and a lot of cool stuff. Premium services. We also have a, a product called Hiver, which is, it provides automation and insights. I'll talk about it a little bit at the end. So these are a few words about myself. And let, let me just uh, introduce the topic, the basic vulnerability, a bit, pretty, um, pretty um, simple vulnerability that initiated the whole research. CRLF injection. CRLF injection, or new line injection, is a very simple vulnerability. You can see at the HTTP request, when I enter ABCD, the response contains the word ABCD as part of the HTTP response. Nothing too exciting in here, but whenever I enter the combination percentage 0D, percentage 0A, this is the CRLF combination, carriage return and line feed. These are the two characters that form a new line. So whenever I enter this in the request, I can see that in the response, I have ABCD and then a new line, another, another ABCD. OK, it's nothing new. If you haven't known this, um, you, haven't you haven't missed anything. It's not very exciting. It's been out there for years. Uh, but it led to a very interesting research journey. And so what can you do with CS CRLF injection? So in some cases, whenever you have non-redirection HTTP responses, for example, 200 OK or 404 not found, you can do this. Basically, you inject. This is URL encoded, uh, but this is an injection of a new line two times or four, uh, two times uh, uh, percentage 0D, percentage 0A, and then a script tag, a simple HTML script tag used for cross-site scripting. And you can see the response on the right contains the script tag with a simple alert, and the final outcome is cross-site scripting. But this is only for 200 and 404 like requests, responses, sorry. Uh, so we have cross-site scripting in several places. But for redirection response, for example, to 301 move permanently, you cannot do that. It's fine thing because you do have a response body. You have a, a, this HTML move permanently, but it does not execute. So you cannot use it for cross-site scripting. You can put your own script tag, but it won't be executed by all major browsers. So what can you do with it? This was the initial question that we came across. Most CRLF injections are, in, in fact, uh, use this uh, uh, scenario when, with redirection. Uh, so we thought about maybe we can put another location header. When you have a redirection response, your browser, the server sends you the location of the, the location where your browser is supposed to go. In this example, you can see this uh, line number seven, the censored line. Uh, and I injected my own location as part of the request. You can see in here, location example.com, and I got another location header. OK, that's interesting. So we tried to do that in order to create a URL redirection to untrusted site, open redirect vulnerability. This is, by the way, common weakness enumeration. Uh, and we tried to exploit it like this. And then we saw this response. It says, this is a Chrome browser, ERR, response header, multiple locations. So OK, it looks like this is not exploitable. Game over. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed my lecture. Just kidding. So what are we going to do next? And luckily, I have some crazy friends, really crazy friends. One of them, a colleague of mine, 
started, initiated this research, and he was doing this research process of taking multiple websites, finding multiple websites which are vulnerable to CRLF injection. This is with a, a utility called Nuclei. I highly recommend it to, if you're not familiar with it, this is a very cool utility that enables you to find, to pinpoint exact vulnerabilities, such as open redirect, cross-site scripting, SQL injection, multiple templates, open source, uh, a very uh, live um, um, community with uh, uh, new templates that keeps coming, coming on. If you heard about some recent uh, uh, log for j log for shell vulnerability that in a matter of hours you already had nuclei templates for log for shell so he was um, searching for crlf injection using um, uh, one of the, the community's templates for finding crlf injection and then he used playwright playwright is a very nice framework by microsoft you also have puppeteer by google who enables you to control a browser programmatically uh, and then you can issue commands, very simple commands. For example, follow this URL and a bit more complicated, such as click this button or fill this field. And he, he was uh, using Playwright to check uh, where, for cases that CRLF injection with two location that actually works. So this was the initial research. Uh, and then let's see what happened next. He found this weird case, and this is where I came into the picture. He sent me this weird case of two very similar looking uh, domains for the same company. Let's call it Company V. Again, legal, for le legal consultant does not allow me to disclose uh, things that are, are, uh, are still vulnerable. And yes, they are still vulnerable to, it's a major company, and it is still vulnerable to CRLF injection. And he found very similar two domains that are, in fact, behave differently. You can see .asia domain on the left, uh, where this actually worked. You can see that I have a location header that I injected to the HTTP response, and then redirected to example.com slash success. And on the right, the same domain with .com didn't work. I got the error response from Chrome. And he sent it to me, and he said, hey, look at it. This is a weird case. And we started to uh, run, to, to dig like crazy and research what's going on. Why do you have these two very similar cases? It looks exactly identical. If you look at here, the response looks identical. Nothing different except .com and .asia. That's it. So what the hell is going on? So this, was a, this is an exact position that I was, <laughs> I was in while doing this research, we started to think maybe it's the SSL version, TLS version, extension of some kind. Maybe it's a certificate for one server and not the other. Maybe it's HSTS, which is um, a mechanism that uh, forces the communication to, uh, to use HTTPS and not HTTP. Maybe it's the preload list of H HSTS. Maybe it's a different protocol. We didn't know what to uh, think about this weird case until we found the answer. And the answer was HTTP protocol. So we have HTTP 1.1, and you have HTTP 2, which is more recent and compresses uh, the communication, so it's a better performance. And .com used HTTP 1.1, and we got this error message. And um, the other one, .asia, used HTTP 2 which enables us to translate CRLF injection into an open redirect vulnerability. So this is a demo of the vulnerable behavior. So you can see a curl request to a demo site, which is vulnerable to CRLF injection with HTTP 1.1. And you have two location headers at the response, and you take it to the browser, and it follows the first URL. Sorry, this one does not work. The HTTP 1.1 does not work. And the other one, the other demo site that we were doing, we were creating. So this one talks with HTTP 2. And again, two location headers. First one is example.com. And if I copy this, I'm redirected to example.com. So this is an open redirect exploitation. 
And we started digging in. And Chrome is actually based on an open source project called Chromium. I don't know if you heard of it, but Chromium is the, actually the, the most um, common web browser out there because all major browsers use it, including Microsoft Edge. Their new version is actually based on Chromium, which is maintained by Google. So you have Chrome, you have Edge, you have Opera, you have Samsung native browser, you have many, many other browsers. All of them reacted the same. Uh, so we started to debug Chrome, Chromium, sorry, uh, because it's an open source. And eventually, we found the location where you get an er the error with HTTP 1.1, but not with HTTP 2. And eventually, we found that this is, in fact, uh, something that does not exist. For HTTP 2, this code never executes, or at least it is executed too late after the redirection occurs. So why is it vulnerable? What is the perfect storm that enables a simple CRLF injection to be translated into an open redirect request? Oh, sorry. I, I need to see this. But why? <laughs> it's special effects. I insist of showing it. Um, so the perfect storm is clients that uses Chromium, which is in most cases, server that uh, supports HTTP2 and that is vulnerable to CRLF injection. Uh, as the validation occurs after the redirection, uh, and two, uh, CRLF injection enables us to return two location headers, but there is one additional condition. The injected value of our location needs to be the first one, because the browser, although you do not get an error if you, have HTTP, uh, if you use HTTP2, it follows the first location header. So then we ask ourselves, OK, this is not the case in any configuration. So what's going on? So we have this, but we didn't know what are the configuration that enables to, uh, to um, um, edit the first location header. So we saw some vulnerable examples like this. And we saw some others that were not vulnerable, like this one. Uh, you can see here the header location actually contained uh, the two values together, concatenated. He did not treat the CRLF as a new line for a new header. So this was very intriguing. What's going on? And eventually, we found a vulnerable configuration. Whenever you have a reverse proxy that swaps the order of the response headers, so this is actually the vulnerable configuration. Your browser connects with HTTP2 to a reverse proxy of any kind. The reverse proxy talks to the backend server with HTTP 1.1 and reverses the order of the response header. And this is the exact configuration that enabled it to be vulnerable. That's nice. So you figure out, OK, let's find some con uh, so actual configuration. So we found Cloudflare, for example, and the state while HTTP2 is not supported between the Cloudflare network, which is the reverse proxy, and the customer origin, which is the backend server, Cloudflare Railgun, which is their proprietary technology, provides similar benefits uh, for connecting multiplexing and HTTP header compression. So they do it on their own, and uh, they switch lo the location header, uh, which makes it vulnerable. So we found multiple uh, Cloudflare examples in the wild. We also had our own, created our own free tier in Cloudflare and uh, proved that this is the case. This is the, the blame. Uh, and we found some examples in the wild and also found Nginx, which is my next key star in the presentation. Uh, and you can see Nginx sets the HTTP protocol version by proxy. By default, version 1 is used. Version 1.1 is recommended, but it does not support HTTP2 for connecting to the backend server. And this is also a vulnerable configuration. But we also found some non vulnerable configurations as well. So this is the vulnerable configuration that we actually managed to create in a lab. And it uses the request URI uh, variable or configuration. You can see the last line, proxy pass. This is how you, conf you configure Nginx as a reverse proxy. Uh, and the, the backend server is 52, 27, 77, 148. And the request URI uh, variable, uh, it is redundant. You don't have to use it. 
If you remove it, Nginx automatically append the query of the original request to the backend server. Uh, but for some reason, they also support this, the request URI, which also appends it, but also reverse the order of the response. Very weird behavior. We are not sure what's going on in the internals of Nginx, uh, but this is the behavior that we, we saw. Uh, and we also found some other non-vulnerable uh, Nginx websites, like th this one. Again, the, you can see HTTP to protocol error, that it means that the, uh, the location headers are not um, um, separated to two location headers. And we found uh, some configuration which is not vulnerable. You can see here, without request URI, this is not vulnerable. And we found some notable examples, Nginx and Cloudflare. Uh, the first example of Cloudflare is very cool, by the way. This is, a, again, a famous website starts with a C, uh, that uh, we were unable to, uh, to enter any dots. So instead, we used the hex encoding of IP addresses. So this large number in here is being tra translated to an IP address, and this enabled us to bypass the blacklist and to uh, redirect to a malicious site we own. We also found PayPal. It used HTTP 1.1 only, so unfortunately, it wasn't vulnerable. But speaking of PayPal, it they were vulnerable to CRLF injection nine years ago, and they just recently fixed it. So here is, a, again, the legal consultant forbidden me to show anything that is still vulnerable, but I can show this. This is the old, very old version of PayPal. So if you go and uh, use uh, injection, you don't have to use both, by the way. You can see here, he used only percentage zero D. You can have set cookie response header, and then you can modify the cookie. So let me just go forward a little bit. So here he modified the cookie and put ASD, ASD as the cookie value. And then he found this internal page who actually shows you the cookie value. You can see ASD, ASD, the second cookie that he was setting. And he found it to be also vulnerable to cross-site scripting, script alert as part of the cookie. And you can see script pops up. And then you can just join the two parts together. Let me just go forward. And you have an iframe as part of the set cookie response. And this is a phishing website, boom.ru. And the final outcome is first you set the cookie, then you go to the internal page. You can also join the two together. You go to the internal page and you see paypal.com with a phishing website. So again, CRLF injection, they're, they're been vulnerable for years, and they just very recently fixed it. OK, so the aftermath of all of this process, we responsibly disclosed Clo Cloudflare, but they didn't um, consider this as a vulnerability. It's just a very rare case of a specific uh, situation of both Chromium and uh, uh, CRLF injection. It's not their fault. And also Nginx, same goes for Nginx. They replied it's not a real vulnerability. Uh, we got uh, uh, some uh, uh, very cheap company, Google. Uh, they issued a small bounty uh, prize for us for uh, uh, disclosing this uh, irregular uh, uh, behavior in Chromium, and they fixed it. This is now currently does not work in HTTP2 on, uh, also. But then I found this article. And this article of Nginx talks about another form of CRLF injection with another configuration of URI, dollar $URI. And we tried it, and then I saw this very weird behavior. You see the location header that I injected is suddenly part of the request to the backend server, not the response. And it uh, initiated another, a second step of the research in which we tried to do, OK, let's see what we can do with request injections, request headers injections. So instead of location, which does not affect the HTTP request, we tried to inject a ho uh, some other um, um, headers. We also found the vulnerable configuration. If you use URI or document URI, again, it's a known issue in Nginx. This is vulnerable. 
and we try to inject a host header. OK, it's starting to become interesting. So what can you do with an additional host header, which is not the original one, not the host header of the actual backend server that is your server? So uh, we started to, th uh, again, oh, search, search for open redirects and maybe request smuggling, maybe some, some shared hosting issues. And we found some open redirects. You can see here, again, all of these are still vulnerable, unrelated to the first open redirect uh, of the, the Chromium issue. So we inject a host header with example.com, and we immediately get redirected to example.com, again, an open redir redirect. Uh, it's nice, but it also happens if you tamper the host header itself directly in the request. If you put example.com, you are also redirected, but it makes it exploitable. You can send the link to someone. When he clicks it, he automatically redirects it to your malicious website, which is nice. We also found re uh, tried request smuggling. This is a very weird website, Nginx. You can see I um, injected a host header with double new lines, and I get, got bad requests. And then with one new line, I got no response at the bottom. Uh, with a get slash request, I also got no response. But here, when I inject a whole new request, get HTTP 1 and localhost, I get 200 OK. And this is request smuggling. It actually makes the reverse proxy send two requests to the backend server and not one. And it's interesting, but we haven't found any actual payload because we didn't have anything to play with. It's a, it was a very small website, but again, it's a very interesting lead that can be maybe further investigated. But then we tried another thing. You have multiple shared hosts uh, out there, GitHub pages, you have AWS S3, you have actual websites that are hosted at AWS S3. And we tried, we, feel, we thought, OK, let's redirect the flow so instead of reaching the backend server, let's reach our own server instead. And this was a very interesting lead. So we created this vulnerable website at GitHub Pages. And let me show you a short demo of what can I do with this website. So this is the vulnerable website named after my colleague who initiated this research. And if you enter percentage zero D, percentage zero A, you see bad requests. And this is a telltale sign for CLRLF injection. It, it tells you that something is wrong. Either the request or the response, something and messes up the communication with the backend server. Uh, and then we continued. And for example, put here, I just complete the HTTP request with HTTP, do you see it, by the way? Let me just put it here for a second. So I just complete the HTTP request with a space and then HTTP 1.1. Then I add my new line and then a host header. So let me put blah, blah in here. And again, a new line and another new line. Let's end the current request and let's see what happens next. So if I put this, I get 404 not found. OK, that's interesting. GitHub pages, there isn't a site in here. OK, so let's change it instead of blah, blah. Let's put www.example.com. If I put this, I get yet again open redirect, which is nice. But then we initiated our own GitHub pages page. Oh, sorry. This is how it looks like, by the way. If you decode it, this is what the backend server gets. So we initiated our own GitHub Pages page in here. So this is the GitHub page we initiated. It just shows you the current domain, which is Omrin Bar Sysec github.io, and then we embedded this domain as part of our attack. So here you can see the host header points to a GitHub page.
And now my current domain is the original one. But the backend server is not the original one. This is our GitHub Pages server. So this was the proof of concept that we, we created. And then we searched for it in the wild. And we found several examples of that. Again, for legal issues, I cannot tell, uh, show you this uh, because they are still vulnerable. And then we had an internal debate. Omri told me, hey, this is cross-site scripting, a new form of cross-site scripting. I said, no, it's not. Yeah, but you can execute script on other websites. I said, yes, but you bypass all defenses, tamper the execution flow, and replace the access server. And so I introduce you frontjacking, front-end server hijacking. Uh, so, uh, sorry for reading out. Front-end hijacking is a hacking technique that combines CRF injection, HTTP request server injection, and cross-site scripting, exploiting a poorly configured reverse proxy deployed with a shared hosting environment, allowing attackers to inject a new host header, hijack the front-end server, and replace the access server with an attacker control server. What can you do with it? This enables the attacker to execute any reflected cross-site scripting and phishing-related attacks uh, while bypassing any defensive mechanisms. So here is a short comparison between cross-site scripting and front jacking. If you have content security policy, which is very strict, this is a mechanism that forbids the browser to, for example, load uh, uh, scripts for another, from another domain. Uh, so it's, it would stop cross-site scripting, at least the exploitation part, but it won't stop front jacking because you are the same domain that is permitted to do anything you want. Same goes for HTTP-only cookie attributes which uh, forbids you to steal information, sensitive information, such as the session ID from the cookie. So this is another security mechanism, an older one, uh, that is part of your browser. So again, front jacking bypasses it because you are permitted. You are the actual domain. Same goes for cross-origin resource sharing. If you have an XML HTTP request, a web server, an API, you can access it from the, uh, your malicious server. Uh, if you have certificate validation, it won't help for both. The only thing that is partially um, effective against front jacking is web application firewalls. Some of them identify this as an attack. Although this is not a known one, the special characters make them stop the attack. Uh, so uh, the related CWEs are user interface misinterpretation for critical information, and also close to cross-site scripting, but not exactly. So then we started to look for it in the wild. So uh, we, we created this Nuclei template uh, for searching it in Google Clouds. So you can see we inject our own, uh, front, uh, our own GitHub page, which is called XSS test. Before, I told him it's not XSS. Uh, and then we search for our own response. And we also search it in AWS S3. It's uh, interesting. Thing in here, we redirect to our own bucket called front jack testing, and then we either get our response or we get an error from AWS saying the specified bucket exists in another region. Uh, and then we just brute force through the regions until we hit the right one, because you need to be in the same region as the reverse proxy. But it actually tells it to you, so it's easy to see front jack uh, front checking uh, vulnerabilities in this case. And uh, we started very slowly. We found several uh, websites in the wild. We invented this technique, and we immediately started to search for vulnerable websites, and we found some. Uh, in Google Cloud, we started in Google Cloud and AWS S3, and then we hit the, the jackpot. We found a single IP with more than 12,500 websites. All the domains are pointing to the same IP. All of them are vulnerable, which is very nice. Um, I really like this graph. Zero vulnerable websites in the 16th of February. Two websites which are vulnerable to front jacking in the, second of, uh, in the 17th of January. And 12,500 websites at the 18th. And then we start to think, OK, what is the common technology in here? And we found a common technology which is actually a shared hosting landing pages provider. Uh, and you can create your own landing page for free. They have a free tier. 
So um, we found that uh, we entered the, the system and we uh, registered, and we saw that the three uh, IP addresses that were vulnerable, and they are uh, actually pointing to the same 12,500 websites. Uh, so all of them pointed to the same IP addresses. And we created our own landing page for front jacking, and then we hijacked our own landing page, just as a proof of concept. So you can see on the left, this is the website that we created. On the right is the web same website that was hijacked. And then we sent them the details, and we got this response. Let it in for a second. Hey, I never heard about bug bounty programs, to be honest. Is this some of, sort of security? Would you mind telling me more about it? And we were like, oh, we cannot believe that in 2022, people do not know what bug bounty is. Uh, but eventually, we found uh, that they really hid it really well in their website, report the vulnerability submission form, and we submitted it to them. Uh, so yet again, we contacted Nginx saying, OK, we understand the previous time it wasn't your fault. It was CRLF injection. But now it's your fault. You are the blame for the CRLF injection. And we got no response yet again. And we found uh, some multiple vulnerable websites. And we tried to contact them. Again, no response. The only one that actually took care of this is the shared landing page provider. Uh, initially, they didn't know what the bug bounty is. But eventually, they fixed it. But they gave no credit nor bounty. Booze. Well, what can you do? So, um, recap and some key takeaways from the whole journey. Always be curious. Even small-looking vulnerabilities, such as CRLF injection, can lead to an exciting journey. Um, and also, I highly recommend you to work with smart people, as Omri. He was unable to join, but he was the one that initiated the research. So thank you, Omri. Uh, and also, a key takeaway. Check your Nginx configuration. Do not use URI, $URI, $request URI, or document URI. It is redundant. If you just remove it from your reverse proxy configuration, it would still work perfectly. But if you add it, it makes it vulnerable. Why are Nginx allowing this? This is a good question. So again, our journey, we started with CRLF injection, exploited as open redirect, found a bug in Chromium and Chrome Edge, etc., exploited in Nginx, and invented a new technique called front jacking. Um, and people ask me, OK, how serious is front jacking? Is it a severe vulnerability? Uh, is it more severe than cross site scripting? And my reply is, how severe is cross site scripting? Is it a severe vulnerability? It depends. And this is what makes Sci unique. A few words about the company I work at, so, except we have some smart people who are really fun to work with. Um, we actually take the vulnerabilities and put it on a graph. And on the left, you can see threat sources, internet attackers, internal employees. On the right, you can see the business uh, assets, such as uh, business continuity, safety, sensitive data. And we actually place all of the vulnerabilities that we find in a red team in operation or a pen test on a graph. And then we have a de data scientist that actually calculate the likelihood of each vulnerability to take place. And then, then we can actually select the critical attack route. And we can tell the CISO, OK, start with this one. And when you focus on the specific attack route, do not fix the critical vulnerability first, but fix this one first, because it's easier. And then you cut the chain. You cut the attack path, and this would make a more cost-effective mitigation plan. And when you finish fixing this one, go to the next attack route and have a proper cost-effective mitigation plan that really if, um, focuses on the context of the vulnerability, because SQL injection in an internal admin interface that is accessible only by two domain admins, this is not as severe as SQL injection in your public website. We all agree. But this is the way we are uh, able to tell apart. Uh, CVSS, it's good, but it's not good enough, because it has some context information, but it's not as detailed as this one. So this is what we actually use. Uh, we help CISOs 
take better informed decisions bent or based on quantifying the risk. We have pen tests, we have red team in architecture review, forensic secure coding. Uh, we have some automation. Our system uh, are, is doing some automation of some of the hacking activities and also provides insights uh, with our data, data scientists that support smart mitigation plan. Uh, so we, this is a few words about the company I uh, work for. So if there are any questions, are you not using Chrome? Maybe you haven't heard of Chrome. I don't know. So he lays all this out to me. OK. Either I was very boring or very clear. I hope I, it was the second option. Thank you very much. <laughs>